Company and I am going to be making a simple strong necklace today but just giving you guys an idea. We have tons and tons of beads. I'm calling this the sticks and stones necklace. I'm going to be showing you the technique of how to do a multi-strand necklace attached to some chain working with some stick beads. So these stick beads are tiger's eye beads that I have in the stick which is going to be about 12 to about 18 millimeter long. There's kind of a variety of sizes on the 16 inch strand. And then I also have some four millimeter round tiger eye that I'll be working with as kind of separating it out and kind of tapering it at, at the end. If you do need any of the materials to do the sticks and stone necklace, you can go below the video to the little date stamp. It says what in the video was created and the date that it was produced. And from there, you can actually click down for more information. You'll get information from us, um, the video creator, with links to the different products online if you do want to kind of follow along and make one with me. Also in the top of the video, there's a little eye if you take your mouse over there. Again, that'll give you links to the different products that are used in the sticks and stone necklace. So the reason that I'm calling it the sticks is because we're going to be using stick beads and then the stones because we're using gemstones and we're going to be using some rounds. In addition to our gemstones, we are using some chain and I have here the um, vintage brass Italian style chain and this is the oval chase, trace chain, excuse me, and it's a flattened oval chain. For the chain, you're going to be using approximately um, 12 to 18 inches, depending on how long you want your necklace. That's going to be enough for each side of the necklace to have chain, because we're going to be basically creating a necklace with one piece of chain back each side, and then our focal piece in the front for the sticks and stones. In addition to our chain, which I'll be using about uh, 12 inches, six on each side, and then again, if you want to make it a little bit longer, you may even want up to 18 inches to give you nine on each side. I'm going to be using um, a clasp. So I'm going really, really easy. I'm just using a pewter brass clasp, and this is an S-hook. The necklace is going to be heavy enough that an S-hook will work. It'll be nice and easy because I don't need to go in and actually attach a clasp at all. However, if you'd like to attach a lobster, make it a little bit more secure, or you feel more comfortable with that, you can also get a lobster and some jump rings. Again, the chain is thick enough here being that it's seven and a half millimeter wide that I can just go right in with my S hook. In addition to that, you'll need some crimp tubes and I have four crimp tubes here. Um, one for each side because I'm going to be doing a double strand. And then I have my wire and my pliers. Wire wise, I'm using 0 0.015 Betalon in the silver color. And I'm going to need approximately 20 inches of that. That's going to be more than enough to do your center section up to eight inches each piece. And we're going to uh, make it graduated so the top strand is going to be smaller than the bottom strand. Plier wise, I have a needle nose pliers and then I have um, my wire cutters to flatten out my crimp tube and then also to cut the wire off the spool. To get started, I'm actually going to take apart my sticks. So I'm going to take the sticks, and like I said, this is a 16 inch strand of the sticks. We have them in a couple different gemstones, as well as a good idea for you if you're using briolettes or drops of any kind. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take my cutters, and we are going to cut these sticks and take them off the strand. From here, I'm actually going to graduate them. So I'm gonna use about half a strand approximately, so about eight inches if you do get one strand you will have enough to do both, um, you'll have enough to do uh, two necklaces if you're doing it kind of the exact same as me. So I'm gonna take half that strand off and I have another eight inches that I can work with, kind of tie that off and set that aside. I'll be working just with this pile here. Again, what I wanna do is make it graduated in shape. So I'll move these off to the side and kind of spread out my gemstones. What I'm gonna do is start with the biggest one. The way that these are drilled are to the side I'm going to start with my biggest one first and kind of put that at the bottom. From there, you're going to do your eye-catching thing. Look for the next biggest one. Pull those out and so forth. So we're going to keep going, going with smaller and bigger, pulling these out. So I'm going to go through here, look for the bigger ones and the smaller ones, pulling them out in groups of two to create a nice symmetry between them. 
going again with those larger and smaller and keeping those out. I'm going to do this with all of the beads going through and creating the design here. I'm going to do a bunch down here that are longer. And if you find one that's longer than the one before, you just kind of switch it in place and keep going. From there then, I'm going to start my second layer, which is going to start at the top here. And again, it's going to start with a smaller one and then work my way, or my biggest one. So like I did with the bottom beads, I'm doing that with the top as well. You can see the bottom is going to expand out a little bit further than the top. I want about two inches less of beads on the top as I do the bottom. The top also, because they're smaller beads, are a little bit thinner. We are going to end up with about two inches difference from top to bottom. An inch on each side is going to give us about an inch in the middle space, which is what I want. You can see here from the strand, that we were all mixed up size wise and now we have kind of a nice graduated look to the strand when you buy graduated strands they're usually going to be a little bit more costly than a strand like we have with the mix and then you can graduate it yourself so that's a nice economical way to kind of go about getting these teeth beads or getting that fan look is basically to do it yourself now there's going to be some variety you can see where the holes line up there that i might move some around as i'm working with them some higher some lower and then there's also usually kind of an oddball or two that you may want to keep out. This one's really small. It's right in the middle. I'll use it for a different project and kind of keep it off to the side. Overall, though, those are the that's the only one that I kept off to the side of that whole strand, and I'm going to work up and do this strand with it. Again, I have the 4 millimeter round also that I'm going to be adding in to the design at the end to kind of pull it into shape wise. Other than that, I want that full fan look, so I'm gonna string these beads nice and close together. Once you have your beads lined up, you can kind of push them off to the side or keep them right on the mat. I'm gonna keep them right on the mat and go ahead and cut my wire. So my wire here is that Beadalon 7 strand. It's an inexpensive, nice beading wire. And I'm gonna cut about 10 inches. Remember I said we're gonna use about 20 total. If you have a bead stopper, which is the little spring, you can use that. You can use a piece of tape, you can hold the end. It's kind of up to you how you wanna go about actually stringing the actual piece. From here, I have this 10 inches. I'm gonna go ahead with my wire cutter, cut another 10 inches off the spool, put those wire cutters to the side. And right now I'm gonna go into the actual graduation here and string both strands, the top and the bottom, onto my bead, separate pieces of my beading wire. So I now have my two strung pieces of my sticks. I have my bigger sticks here, and then also my smaller sticks. And again, they're about an inch and a half to two inches difference in length by the time you kind of get all of those sticks stacked nicely on top of one another. You can see here that if I pull them back and hold them on each end here, they're gonna kind of fall over top of one another. I don't want that to happen and I want them to sit a little bit more separated. Here's where the stones come in for those sticks and stones. I have my four millimeter of my tiger eye round going with the same stone. And I'm going to put three of that round on both the ends of the smaller section of my sticks. This is going to give me a little bit more length at the top here. And then at the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing, adding some more of those round sticks. It's also going to make it nicer and easier to go into my chain, which I'm going to be doing and adding on the sides here. On both the right and the left side of the longer sticks, I'm going to go ahead and put on five of my round gemstones. You can play around too with color. You could have added some of these round ones in at the top, but that's going to give me enough space for these to sit nicely and for those to kind of hang out next to one another as I'm working since the stones and the sticks there kind of drop against one another. So you don't want them to drop and hang over top of one another. That's where this difference in length is going to come in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and add 
another five of my round beads onto the other side. And you can play around depending on the length of your sticks if you're working with them. Obviously the longer sticks that you have, if you do want them to sit apart from one another, the longer you're gonna need to make or the more drastic you're gonna need to make that difference in length. So it's always a good idea to have a couple extra beads on handy. So on hand, that way if you do want to take that down one and just do two at the top and do six or seven at the bottom, you can do that as well. So have a couple extra handy, especially if you're working with a different style of chips or briolettes that you want to hang down. Because like I said, there is going to be a difference in the length that they are versus the length that they're gonna sit apart from one another. So I have five beads on here on each side. And what you wanna to do to get the length is kind of pinch each end, lay them down, and then you're gonna to get to see how they separate out and how they sit against one another. Because I don't want them, like I said, to really touch at all from the top chip to the bottom chip. So I'm gonna kind of move them down. When you're wearing it, it will naturally fall a little bit. Pinching them, you can see then, and kind of hold them up. It's hard to do on camera here, exactly how they're gonna fall and exactly what the different, um, the different length between each is gonna be. From here, once you're happy with your length, you're gonna to attach to your chain. So the easy thing that I like to do is, because I like to change the actual length of the necklace, and because I'm using an S hook, it's gonna make it really easy to make this chain and to make this necklace have a extension chain, per se. I'm going to use the same amount of chain on each side. Rather than cutting the chain in half, I'm just gonna to attach to the ends of the chain, and then I'll go ahead and cut that chain in half at the very end. If you have a specific size that you want the necklace, you wanna check the drape edge, kinda of hold it up, see exactly how long you want the chain on the side, and it may also depend on what you're planning on wearing it with. What I'm gonna do now is actually get ready to crimp the clasp, or crimp the ends on, rather, to the actual chain. So I'm going to put a crimp tube onto my wire, go into the chain, and I'm simply going to loop on the chain. So I'm going to take my thread and needle, go through the last link of chain, go through the crimp tube, through a bead, and kind of push that up. Now I have lots of extra wire on the other side, so I'm not going to worry that the wire is exposed here in the middle of the project. Because I'm doing a flat crimp, I'll kind of push that bead down off to the side, get my crimp close up. I don't want it too tight on the chain that it is going to uh, rub right against the chain. I want it to have a little bit of playroom. I'm going to make sure that's nice and flat down. That little tail there, go ahead and push the extra beads that you have right over the tail. If you are using a small bead like a pearl or something that doesn't have a big hole, you can also cut the chain right after that. I'm going to push the rest of the strand down next to that chain. Grab the other end of the chain, grab my next crimp tube, put that crimp bead on, go to that other side of the chain, and simply repeat, going through the last link of chain, going back through the crimp tube, and back through the next couple beads. This time what I'm going to do is make sure that there's no extra wire showing, any extra beading wire showing in between my beads. Get my crimp bead right there. So it mimics the other side and flatten it out. From there then I'm gonna take my wire cutters and you can see you have a little bit of extra wire that you'll have. And you're gonna cut that extra wire, pulling up on the wire and pushing down on the pliers, cut that extra wire. From this point then, you're gonna have your nice necklace that you have your bottom sticks exposed. Another idea that you can do if you wanna see two things of chain is actually make a whole nother strand that you can wear with or without. So if you want kind of a necklace that's a little bit more mellow, you can wear one strand. If you want, then you can double it up. I'm gonna go bold and keep this as my strand that I'm gonna to wear together. So I'm gonna go bold, it's summertime, and I want kind of that nice drastic difference. Seeing how these sit inside of one another, I'm actually gonna take off one of my round beads here on either end and just do two. From here, you'll go in with your crimp tube then and do the exact same thing. So we're not worrying about the end right now. We're just gonna take our crimp tube, go into our chain, 
go through the last loop of chain just like we did with the other strand and then back through the strand. Because the chain sits the way that it does with the links going every other way, I'm not going to worry whether or not I have this above or below the previous one. It's not going to matter as I create. Go in then, pushing that crimp tube up, and go ahead and crimp down on that crimp tube. And cut that smaller. Push those beads right over the extra wire. Also, if you want to and you don't like the look of the crimp bead, you can always use crimp covers as well. Put on the crimp tube on the opposite end then. Go back into the opposite side of the chain and feed this on. If you are deciding that you want to do a project that is more than two strands, you will want to make sure the order of your crimp tubes and your wire sit the same basically on either side. That the strand that's going to be in the middle, if you're doing three strands, sits in the middle of the crimp beads. I'm going to go in then and tighten this up. Again, pulling just enough so that you can see the wire there that it's not going to um, pinch against the clasp. Flatten that out nice and flat. Get that cut nice and close, pulling up on the wire and kind of pushing down on the pliers. You have that nice little snap of the wire. And then you have that nice completed loop and completed look with those nice little teeth or daggers kind of hanging down one strand and then the other strand. And you can see they kind of sit perfectly sitting apart one from the other. From here then I will go into the design and I'm going to go to the back of the chain and cut the chain equal lengths. So you can have a ruler here if you want. I'm just doing it by eye, making sure that they're here at the start the same, pulling them back. I'm going to go to the very back here and if there's a center link, which there is right there, I'm going to cut the center link. Also, if you do have a little bit of extra chain and you want it to be shorter, you want you don't want to use an S hook, a great thing to keep an extra couple links of chain for are earrings. If you do want to make matching earrings, you can pick out two strands uh, or two pieces of your tiger eye that look similar and make it look like a nice complete scent by using the actual links of the chain to connect your bead with a head pin or with a piece of wire to your actual ear wires. What I'm going to do then is open up my clasp, put my clasp on to my last link of chain, kind of push it down a little bit, and then as I wear it, all I have to do is link it on there as well. The nice thing with this clasp again, that my necklace has enough weight that it'll keep it down, and if I want to, I can actually wear it smaller by going into a different link of chain and just have some chain kind of hanging down on the back of the neck. If you want it to look a little bit more decorated on the back too, you can take a head pin and one of your four millimeter rounds and just hang down a gemstone bead from each. That way it'll look a little bit more designed for you if you do think that you're going to want a lot of chain off the back. Again, if you wear it a couple times and you decide, oh yeah, I want it to be shorter, you can cut the chain to whatever length you want when you're using an S hook in this fashion. You can then use those extra little links to do earrings if you want, or keep them in mind for necklaces that you want to create pieces of chain in between the link and the design. It's always a great idea to keep all your extra little pieces of chain because you never know when they will come in handy and when you'll need just that little bit extra one inch of chain. From there then you will have your sticks and stone necklace complete. It's hard to show the necklaces on the actual film setting here um, to do a nice look and kind of wearable design to show you guys the actual finish of it. But it's going to be a nice addition to kind of your jewelry collection. A nice switch from a lot of the different designs that we do, which are going to use thread and needle. This is a nice, easy one to get you started. A lot of people that do bead weaving don't even know kind of how to crimp or kind of how to do this simple form of jewelry. And it's also a great thing to get you started and have a nice kind of summer bohemian look to it as well. A nice statement piece if you have um, an outfit for it to go with. Again, if you need any of the materials, you can go back to the beginning of the video, to that little date stamp underneath the video, or to the little eye in the top corner of the video. You can always feel free to purchase from me at PotomacBeads.com. In addition, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to get regular updates on cool jewelry designs or ideas, what's going on in the beading world, kind of keeping you 
in on uh, the fashion of it, the new products, as well as new designs for you guys to subscribe to this YouTube. You can also share the YouTube with friends as well if they have some beads that you want to give them some ideas to work around with. You can also stay connected with me on Facebook and you can also join our group on Facebook for beading and jewelry making and ask to become a member to that group. It's a wonderful interactive group of people that love to make jewelry. They do a wonderful job and they're happy to share information, give ideas, and give suggestions as well. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. And if you get a chance to get your hands on some of these fun stick beads and create that fan graduated style, enjoy making the sticks and stone necklace. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and have fun creating.